So our, our topic is about uh, how to integrate uh, uh, model-based system engineering through the undergraduate curriculum. It's a, it's a quite hard task to do because of the, well, the style of our stakeholders, the teenagers. <laughs> we have several troubles with that, but well, let's, let's discuss about that. So, uh, a little presentation about ourselves. Uh, my name is Christopher. Don't, don't need to call me Sir Kira. I, my, my father is Sir Kira. I use my f first name. I have a bachelor in, in computer engineer, which helps a lot to understand uh, model based system engineering. Uh, uh, Eduardo and I have, uh, uh, we did the master and PhD together uh, at INP. Uh, Currently, I lecture at the uh, Aeronautics Institute of Technology and I collaborate at the uh, ETH Space Center. It's uh, uh, a place where the students learn space engineering, anyway. And my research domains are concurrent engineering, system engineering, uh, human-machine interaction, and industry and space 4.0. Uh, for those who doesn't know uh, the Aeronautical Institute of Technology, I'm right over here in this part of the globe, you know, right in this, this, the south part of the, the globe, and I'm in the state of São Paulo, and the city is called São, São José dos Campos. It's very close to the, our biggest city in Brazil, São Paulo, and we are right over here. Eduardo. Uh, so thank you, Christopher. Thank you also um, for the Capella Days organization team. Uh, also my colleague and friend Christopher for the invitation to be part of this uh, presentation, uh, showing a little bit of our experiences of uh, FSM. So very briefly, my background is mechanical engineering. I have masters and PhD in space systems engineering uh, and management, as well as uh, Professor Christopher. Uh, I'm currently lecturing at the Federal University of Santa Maria, also coordinate the engineering part of the of a NanoSat CBR program, which is a CubeSat uh, program here at uh, UFSCM together with INPI. And uh, my research domains are concurrent engineering, model-based systems engineering, uh, verification validation, and also uh, spacecrafts. And there is a QR for those who want to find me. And here is a, a picture of our campus, just a, a small portion of our campus, which is uh, really, really big. It's located in Rio Grande do Sul state. You can see there the red state uh, in the city called Santa Maria. It's the, it's the heart of the state, right in the middle of the state. Thank you. Well, when the storm is coming right over here from the south, and you get Eduardo prison. <laughs> so, uh, a little summary about what we're going to talk. First, we are going to set up uh, uh, fr our framing definition about what we consider as a system engineer. Well, I mean, I'm talk to an uh, audience that already knows about that, but uh, we usually uh, bring those definition all together every time. We are going to talk a little about about the engineer undergraduate courses and a little bit about the changes that it uh, had in the last uh, decades. And we finally going to talk about the experiences that we had both at IT and both in the UFSM. And we we are going to close these sessions with some comments. Well, to frame what the definition about system engineer, first of all, uh, I would like to bring the, this definition and we did you highlight the for this first phrase, which uh, uh, set up the, the change from the interdisciplinary to transdisciplinary approach uh, which system engineer had. So 
what this come about? This because the system engineer was a collection of disciplines that we unite to well bring up the, the systems, and now it's about the people as well, the, how the people interact with each other, and uh, how the process evolves with the people evolving through the process. So, it's a, a, a pretty nice definition that the uh, that they come up. It's in the, at the Incos site. Uh, it's not all this definition, but it, I think that's in, in the last paper. But uh, it's well, it's uh, the new trend. So we fo focus more on the people uh, real uh, doing the process than the the methodology itself. Well, we we are educators, so we focus on on transmit the knowledge to people. So that's why we, uh, we 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 like a lot this definition. And model based system engineer just to 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 focus the the the. the the presentation it's about do domain models as a primary means of information exchange so we could we actually ha still have courses at brazil lecture and system engineering and at the document based uh, uh approach uh, and now we Eduardo and I were translating to the model based system engineer approach unfortunately I think that Eduardo and I would be the I think that the only two professors at Brazil lecture model based, but and we're trying to to get more more professor to the the country. Uh, well, setting up the the definition, let's go to see the the panorama uh, picture of how are our undergraduate courses. Well, uh, first of all, uh, all the engineer course came from guilds. I don't know if you guys play role play games, but well, they, they have several guilds with several uh, uh, well engineered uh, approaches. One will blacksmith, one will make clothes and so on. Those are the basic schools to our engineer course now, nowadays. So uh, we, we came a, a, a good part from that reunion of people that knows a technical uh, 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 skill that they pass the technical skills through each generation and well we came from guilds to engineering so i like this quote from the the freeman dyson and i highlight here in red that a good engineer is a person who makes a design that works with a few original ideas as possible we <laughs> Then we tr we, tr we try to get the tier all the technology readiness level as high as possible to get the con consumer and uh, our clients as happy as possible. So uh, those are the true uh, points about the uh, engineer from the guilds from to end engineer. So uh, through the years uh, we have came far from from that guilds uh, times uh, we, we've been called the, the dark ages and we came up with the first in industrial revolution uh, the steam uh, revolution uh, we came with the second with the oil revolution and we are uh, uh, passing from the the third revolution to the fourth revolution which we we integrate computer uh, and people as well as the the whole process so uh, in, in the in terms of education it's the the process uh, quite change a little. Uh, we had an education in the dark age that's, that was about holisms. We, we had one person that had knowledge of several fields together. He was a system thinker uh, before the system thinkers. And uh, he tried to understand everything and connected dots. And from when the, in the, uh, within the, the time frame of the first revolution, we had a lot of studies, we had uh, uh, Fibonacci and so on, so on uh, uh, try to to get the the whole understood and, and try to get uh, how each discipline might work. And with, with this, the second revolution, we, ha we had the really, the disciplines really split. We had the chemistry on one side, the physics on the other side, and we create several courses that we went into each one very deep. So the second and industrial revolution brought that, brought the courses that were very split from each other. With the third revolution, we started a trend that we have to we have multidisciplinary 
projects we, we had interdisciplinary projects so we have to start connect everything again and we came up in the, to the point that we have to integrate everything with a single source that we unite everything so uh in the in the educational aspects we had the same transition that the, indus the industrial revolutions bring up to us so it's a good point that system engineer model based system engineer frames a, 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 a set of tools not not a tool itself a software tool but uh, engineering tools that help us to unite everything that connects the dots that were first seen by the the the, the and the, the first thinkers, system thinkers to the nowadays that we frame, we, we separate everything and now we are trying to connect everything back together. So uh, I got this reference, it's a, well, it's a professor's slide. So it's, <laughs> it's there, there are a lot of words. So uh, uh, one point that's interesting from this view, uh, we, have, we have this book, the, the Science of the Artificial from Herber, Herbert Simon. And I highlight two parts that are rather important to, to this talk. The first one, uh, I'm going to read it. It has been the task of the engineering school to teach about the artificial things, how to make artifacts that have desired proper, well, <laughs> emergent properties, and how to design. So this is a, a, a very good point to us. But the second part of this uh, highlighted uh, uh, text uh, bring up uh, the problem that the engineering schools have nowadays that they separate everything. So the engineering schools gradually become schools of physics and mathematics, medical schools become schools of bio biological uh, science, business schools become schools of finite math mathematics. So that's uh, quite a problem that because we separate everything after the second war uh, and we're now trying to connect everything back together and uh, we've done a research rather than i in brazil about well which uh, uh, graduate course undergraduate course might have a system engineer curriculum that would uh, try to unite everything well we, we look up uh, with in courses that would naturally have disciplines that try to connect each discipline. So we look up aeronautics, uh, naval, automobile, uh, airspace, agriculture, biomedical, and, and railway, railway uh, uh, engineering course, looking up to the system engineering course. And <laughs> We, we got a, a really bad uh, answer that we, we only had three systems engineering graduation uh, disciplines through the graduation courses. Um, well, that's the panorama. And there, but there are a lot of system engineering courses that they didn't teach system engineer. They teach about how to engineer systems and which is a, a a pretty pretty common uh, uh, figure. You know, they they have uh, electrical system engineering courses. They but they teach about the engine electrical systems, not how to use system engineer to the electrical <laughs> systems. Well, so that that's one panorama that we got, and I think that most problem it's same uh, uh, everywhere uh, as if you can look up. Maybe the the most famous universities uh, have implemented system engineer to the course, but probably not all uh within the system engineer how we understand it but uh before going to the to the experience that Edward and i had uh i would like to do a little disclaimer about our stakeholders uh, our students uh, we they are highly hard skilled students uh, what I mean with that, they do know how to make uh, 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 mathematics, the physics and chemistry and so on. They are all competitive groups. They, they share the time uh, with, with, with our disciplines, with even harder disciplines, with even harder, really hard, elevate to more hard disciplines. And 
the age of the students uh, are across 16 to 26. I mean, more or less, I think that's more or less this, this, and those ages. And we have students from all around Brazil. So Brazil is, is a quite big country. So we re receive students from uh, almost every state of the nation. Uh, well, Eduardo, I, I'm going to start from mine. Uh, well, one thing, uh, we here at ETA, we implemented a, a, a core problem project that goes along through the years. Well, uh, I, I lecture in an aerospace engineering course, so we use space uh, examples and we uh, try to use the same example. Uh, we, we change example through the years, but we use the same project uh, with the same class through the classes uh, along the years. So we did some experimentation within that. So the first uh, experiment uh, we, that we are doing, we are trying to integrate the disciplines. I lecture uh, one discipline uh, that teaches the, the technological aspects of a, a space system, what's a rocket, what's a satellite, and so on. We have a, a second teacher lecture in system engineer, the classical system engineer. Uh, I'm not going to say the old system engineer because <laughs> I, can, I can receive a, a lawsuit after that. But anyway, and, and uh, we have the humanities uh, teaching laws and so on. And we integrated those courses within a, within a single project. So the students uh, would uh, choose, uh, they choose those these topics, earth sensing, data collection. Uh, we had one uh, one year with the uh, aeronautics course, and they, so they, we had a green aviation and so on. So we integrated the courses within assisting engineer course together so the under the students understood could understood why they have to uh, to to understand the stakeholder needs the needs goals and objectives and how they had they translated to functions and how the functions were restrained by the laws the regulations uh, that the the teacher from the humanities uh, was a uh, lecturer and how the technologies were uh, chosen to fulfill those functions so uh, we had this experience experience uh, within this integration uh, out of the integration through the years and integration in the same semester uh, within this point we we do propose every time a system of systems uh, that the, the students would choose one of those projects. So we, we change every year uh, and scenarios and they they will build through the years all the, all the uh, uh, diagrams and, uh, and models and so on. So uh, one thing that's interesting when we place the system of systems to the students because they can uh, interview each other because they are interfacing with each other uh, as a system of systems. So uh, it's pretty interesting. They they preparing the interviews and collecting collecting data, organizing everything, and searching. Uh, we do uh, lecture STPA with this course, so they 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 search about possible hazards uh, to the architectures. It's pretty amusing to see how they interact with each other. Well, well, they're teenagers, they, they talk a lot. So <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, uh, a little bit about a more the, the disciplines. We do use Capella and, uh, in other disciplines that are not really model-based uh, or not really system engineering. We lecture here uh, an integ uh, assembly integration verification validation course, which we give a, 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 a ready, a pre-created model that the students would uh, uh, prepare the the procedures, they place the the ground segment equipment, and maybe change the the the, the architecture to place a test and so on. So if we use here uh, Capella to 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 lecture the students even with this uh, uh, situation that they are uh, stud studying at home, they we 
they are using Capella to, to practice. One second discipline that we did, a soft adoption of model-based system engineer, we have a, a grout segment discipline, a, a grout systems, and they do uh, design the, the ground uh, uh, system. Well, they, they don't design, but they, they, well, they evolve or they, they understand how the the system uh, the ground system works and the parts and they use uh, the the diagrams to plan a, a, a satellite path so which uh, function which command which telecommand will be sent in which uh, in the given order uh, and they they plan several passes and so on using the, the Capella. Well, they use model base without using uh, a model based system engineering. So that's pretty, pretty fun. And one point uh, to make about that with the, the, at least the first year that we implemented that, because the students didn't had uh, a, a background of Capella before, they actually took, uh, took them a couple of weeks to, well, to, to start up the engine and and see and understand how the 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 software works and after that they they started to use capella to other disciplines and uh, activities and 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 using to to model well other contexts and so on that uh, well that was the point uh this this is the basic framework of what ITA has. We also has a, a, a additional lecture that the students might uh, choose to, to take. Those uh, four courses they, they must take every year, but we we are trying to implement a couple of news uh, each, every year. So this one, uh, it's we also attempt to to unite system engineer, not system engineer, but uh, uh, well, system engineer like that diverts uh, space mission uh, engineer method, uh, lecture them how to, to evolve a space system, and they decompose the ground system with the uh, uh, the Capella only the logical architecture that was only the the part that we were interested, but. The students were able to very much understand the connection about the, the VERT, VERT method, the space mission engineer method, with the at least the logical architecture and how they could evolve and, and uh, decompose the architecture. Out, out of that, it also lecture uh, a, a model basis uh, system engineer to students, but students are not. Uh, they don't have to, to take that 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 class, but we insist a lot, and we we are lecture model basis engineer uh, as a language. It's, it's it's pretty fun. I don't know if you guys know this book. It's called Trivium. It's a medieval book that uh, uh, well teaches the lower liberal arts, the grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and we are using as a background uh, framing to lecture model-based engineer. We teach the symbols, that's basically grammar, every language, uh, every word is a, as a symbol, uh, so as every symbol on the pal palette, uh, the logic of interconnecting the, the symbols uh, is how we make phrase. No, it's, it's it's the same, and the model itself is an integrated approach. And we we are uh, lecture a model basis engineer within this this approach. Out of that, we have we also have a concurrent engineer that we also use Capella to that, and it's pretty uh, uh, they they understand pretty fast that yeah uh, it's pretty hard to interconnect things with spreadsheets and it's pretty easy to interconnect things with a model. So. That was another good point that we had with the, within this experience, and and to just to finish, and on yesterday talk, someone asked uh, uh, this 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 chart was not meant, but on yesterday uh, talk somebody came up and well how how we collect things um, uh, before bringing up to the operational analysis uh, level, uh, we are we are. 
I think that's gonna be out on January or February. I don't know the, when they they're gonna uh, 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 publish that, but we're finishing the the review data. And uh, one point that could add more uh, well tools to system engineer is to add operation soft. Uh, in my point of view, soft operational research and the disciplines that try to to understand the problem before formalize the problem and the uh, and the, the structure that Arcada uh, uh, places uh, from the operational to the physical architecture. We also here uh, in try to connect multiple um, model basis engineer frameworks. We we have a a pretty uh, um, uh set up approach within opm now uh, object process methodology methodology with capella so we are we are mapping and, and connecting those points together with the operational research and the multi-criteria decision analysis so this is, is a, 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 a maybe an, an answer for the question that somebody made yesterday uh, well how from how to find the answers to uh, find the set up the problem and to place in, into the operational analysis and how do we intervene uh, with us within a black box system with in that problem so those two points are, are, are often oftenly uh, 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 researched uh, through the field of operational uh, research so that's one point to go and um, Eduardo, I go ahead. I talked a lot. Sorry. Okay. Uh, is my sound okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, just um, just a few words before I I start this uh, this presentation. So I'm very happy to present here our experiences uh, from Federal University of Santa Maria Capella. I would like to highlight that I lecture mainly. Uh, for the aerospace engineering program here. Uh, and it's a new uh, program with just uh, six years. Uh, so the experiences I will share with you today are all related to this program. So aerospace uh, background. Uh, okay, uh, starting with some context, as we are talking about systems engineering, uh, let's talk uh, some slide some slides about uh, the context analysis of uh, where we are here at the UFSM. So we have here uh, in Brazil, uh, a new national curriculum guidelines for engineering education called DCNs, this is the Brazilian acronym for this big word. Um, actually is a six page document published in 2019 for all Brazilian engineering courses. So this means that um, all engineering programs in Brazil must adapt uh, within less than, let's say, three years, uh, right? So we have uh, a program, a, a really huge uh, program reformulation ahead, okay? So the objectives of this, uh, of this document is to meet future demands on more and better engineers. And the main characteristics of this uh, new approach to teach uh, engineering uh, is, focus, is focused and promotes competency-based learning uh, between technical, personal, and interpersonal skills. Uh, it focuses on practice, active learning, interdisciplinarity, and also gives uh, for us, professors, a greater uh, flexibility in the curriculum constitution, right? Here we have uh, an example of just one article of this uh, DCN, just to show you how it relates to systems engineering. Here we have just uh, three topics uh, that I translated. Uh, the first one is to have uh, holistic thinking uh, the other is to be able to identify stakeholder needs and the other to adopt multi and transdisciplinary approaches. So um, we can conclude that uh, we have here 
a, a very hard work for all of us, uh, for all engineering courses in Brazil, but also we have a good opportunity because uh, several requirements of this guideline, uh, as we can see in this example, relates to systems engineering and also the flexibility uh, allows us to include new topics in the program, such as systems engineering and also MBSE. Next. Okay, so uh, just a little bit more of context. Uh, we also, uh, for those who never uh, heard of, uh, we have here uh, this international initiative called CDIO, which is the acronym for Conceive, Design, Implement, and Operate. So this initiative uh, is um, an open educational framework, right? So uh, it proposes uh, uh, the education system to be focused on real world systems. Uh, and it's based on the principle that the system life cycle uh, is the context for engineering education. So in this life cycle, developing projects, real world projects, we teach and students learn and practice uh, different kinds of skills, right? Uh, which are uh, synthesized in the CDIO syllabus. Uh, here you can find the different kinds of skills. Uh, there are mainly four different uh, types of, of skills. Uh, the, the disciplinary fundamentals, personal, interpersonal, and system development skills. And also we have the CDIO standards, uh, which are 12 principles that uh, guides the implementation of CDIO in engineering program. And we are happy to, to announce that uh, the, the October of last year, we had our application approved to be part of this uh, initiative. So in the following slides, you understand why I, I, I said uh, about uh, CDIO and also the DCNs, right? So now starting with um, some uh, experiences uh, we have with Capella. Here uh, we have a, a program course. Actually, you have an interdisciplinary program uh, project between two uh, courses, Introduction to Our Space Engineering, and together with uh, algorithms and um, programming course. So uh, in this uh, project, they learn uh, the systems engineering concepts, but uh, actually we don't use Capella in these uh, disciplines, but we use an Arcadia-like method to teach the systems engineering basic concepts, right? So. Uh, it's very similar to Arcadia, the method that we, we teach. Uh, this, uh, we, we, we perform this way to smooth the future of the use of the Capella tool and also prepare the freshmen uh, of, uh, to both uh, CDIO and also the future systems engineering discipline, right? So uh, here you can see the V model of the course project with the life cycle. Uh, which is adapted to the CDIO phases. You can see the CDIO right there and all the project uh, reviews and the major processes of systems engineering, such as requirements analysis as functional analysis and allocation and verification and validation and so on. So uh, in other words, this project course uh, motivates a lot the, the, the freshmen that right in the first uh, semester of the course of the program and also prepares the ground for systems engineering and MBSE to grow later on the program. Next. So here another experience uh, is uh, with another discipline called Fundamentals of Systems Engineering, which is an elective discipline, but the interest in systems engineering here is uh, growing uh, very fast and we have uh, all the all the, the spots uh, fulfilled of this um, of this course uh, basically we teach uh, the fundamentals of 
of systems engineering with a project-based learning, as you can see here, the, the V model that we use. Uh, so uh, the focus here is on systems engineering. We have one or two lectures regarding MBSE, but it's just uh, theory, right? The Capella learning uh, is made through a previous uh, CDAO project in which the students uh, have developed an introductory course of Capella, which is in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. And this course is for ab absolute uh, beginners and is free. It's on our YouTube channel of the our research project, right? Uh, in this discipline, the students uh, choose right in the beginning of the discipline uh, a system. They choose between a CANSAT, which is a very small satellite, or a flying wing, right? Um, so uh, we are now in the first third of this course. So we don't have too much results to show yet, but we'll be happy to share with you uh, when this uh, uh, happens, right? Next. So another discipline, another course that we use uh, Capella uh, is the space systems concept design. So this uh, course also uses project-based learning. So the, the task of the students, the project that guides the, the students, uh, it's a CubeSat project. So they, their, their duty is to uh, develop a CubeSat mission concept design using Capella as a modeling, uh, as a modeling tool, right? Uh, the focus is on space concepts, but uh, systems engineering concepts are spread all over the, the course, but here we do not uh, teach uh, MBSE. The students uh, learn uh, Capella modeling by themselves, also using uh, experience of other students and also the course that already mentioned uh, in the previous uh, slide, right? Uh, next slide, please. So another experience here is with a CubeSat project, which some of you may already heard of, which is NanoSat CBR3. Uh, um, Julia Herdis, a student of mine, uh, presented uh, some months ago here uh, in, in Capella. Uh, so this program uh, is between INPI and UFSM cooperation. So we develop uh, different kinds of uh, CubeSats and we are now in the third CubeSat and we are beginning the transition from document centric to model centric. So uh, one undergraduate student is performing this uh, transitioning and it's being, it's being uh, quite, uh, uh, let's say hard, but um, very nice to see the, the results, right? Uh, here, uh, you can you can check the, the 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 presentation of this of my student called Julia is in the YouTube channel of Capella, right? So another experience uh, of our use with Capella is with CDI. Hey, Eduardo, so, sorry to interrupt. Yes, yes. Just just to, to warn you that we are reaching the the end of the the timing so, well we can we can continue a few minutes but just to okay to give you the okay information. Will, okay thank you i rush uh, a lot <laughs> thank you uh so here just um cdio project that we uh the students a group of students performed uh, an introductory course uh on mbse so you can access this, this course is in Portuguese for those <laughs> who understand uh, Brazilian Portuguese. This is to promote systems engineering and MBSE for the Brazilian engineering programs. And uh, we are also open to receive needs by Capella community and industry for new uh, CDAO projects which are, which are run uh, in four different semesters uh, here. It's a group of, of students. Uh, 
another uh, part of, of Capella usage is with the final course thesis, which I'll, I'll not uh, talk about uh, too much here for the, the time, uh, but the topic that that has been uh, proposed, uh, next slide, please, uh, Christopher. The next topic is uh, MBSE versus production line. The idea is to understand how MBSE may support product line improvements. This is a research that is being uh, developed. Uh, and this is our uh, research group. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, this is the last part of my presentation to show you our recently created research group, one of the few groups in Brazil focused in systems engineering. So we, ha we are interdisciplinary and also interinstitutional. So we have UFSCM, ITA, and also INPE. And we have these research lines, including MBSE, uh, Industry 4.0, and Systems Engineering. Uh, OK, so I'll pass the floor for Christopher again. Well, let me, let me take. Uh, I, I, I promise that will be just one minute. So uh, just to finish the, the presentation, well, we had several experience. Each college university must have its own DNA and use its own approaches uh, as, a, as a takeout from our research and our experience. Each university would uh, uh, better uh, uh, in, add one system like discipline or system thinking or system engineering would be very helpful. CDIO is a, is a, is a must. Eduardo has been very success, successful at teaching the, the, the approach to them. So one excellent, excellent laboratory that we check up a lot the, from the University of Michigan. They have one model-based system engineering initiative that's very interesting at Brazil. We have a several gap in the uh, systemic competence. We are trying to translate everything to Portuguese, uh, in, and that's a recommendation to which country. Well, they all talk in English, but it's there. There's some terms that would that are rather confused, that are a lot confusing and requires a better translation. So, uh, to the Capella community, translate to several languages. That's that's one point. Use that the uh, translate the symbols and everything. We we can help from the Portuguese side. So, visitor labs is a, a good point. We have a lot of coffee. We're we're from Brazil, so we have a lot of coffee. So come here. That's a lot of points. But just to finish, uh, each uh, course. To each student, it's a journey. It's we have hours to remember that. So each to each student, the, the they have its own history line. So it we separate in semesters, just because well we separate the years in semesters. So we they had a start point that they took some disciplines. We could lecture model system engineer at least the systemic view in the beginning. So it splits from two different disciplines that goes integrating through the steps the through each pro, each year project and so on each discipline has its own path we have aerodynamics one aerodynamics two aerodynamics three and each discipline evolves uh, they they have to interconnect back together so we keep this, this storyline line uh, 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 concise and understood by the students we also have the, the some well parallel stories that happens with different uh, 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 disciplines. They well they goes on and goes off, and that those has to be also taken account. But we, at the end, we have to in, integrate everything together so the students understand the whole and understand everything. So. The CDIO helps a lot, and we are using and, and try to. Yeah, implement a project and problem-based learning uh, in the whole curriculum. So uh, Capel is helping through our course, and we appreciate appreciate Stefan, appreciate Maxim and uh, uh, Juan, and everyone that is is helping us to to get those working in, into our lab. So I appreciate. So questions and maybe answers because maybe we don't know how to answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yes, actually, we have a couple of questions. Uh, when developing a commercial system, um, 
the concept phase might account for life cycle costs. So do you consider reflecting this and other business aspect in your system engine course? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, the, the point that we, we, we have, as we have big uh, classroom, we separate uh, the, the groups in about six or seven students. So we, each one has one uh, main characteristic. So the programmatics students take care about that. So we, but we also have a, man, a, a project management course that runs together, and the the professor in that discipline takes account of that business part of the, the project. How do you teach or prepare the students to implement the methodology out of the academia? Yes, I think that I can answer from uh, from Eduardo uh, and my perspective. We are we are shooting a uh, engineer with uh, Arcada methodology embedded. So <laughs> so that's one point. So uh, uh, even if they we don't actually teach the Arcada methodology, we use into our disciplines so they, they learn the methodology and they know how to, to, to work with it, even not saying the, the, that's from the Arcada methodology. So uh, we are creating students with an a, a mind, a Arcada mindset. About conceptual phase, um... I believe uh, that is not only a logical model, but also a physical model. Yeah. Uh, call it uh, phase A by the NASA. Mm -hmm. um, okay. P P yeah, in, is then more when the physical object is created with uh, with CAD, with a dedicated tool. Yeah. Um, okay, with, with this definition. Okay, so, so maybe you can start answering. Yeah, I, I know what, what the point that that is, is making. Uh, we can how we are lecturing here uh, regarding the life cycle phases. Uh, we are running uh, the capella uh, several times because we in, within the end of the P, well within the end of, of pre A or A depends of the NASA or ECSS. The we have to to do concurrent engineering, select physical things, and even do a, a preliminary CAD model, as you, you said. So we run everything in the in the, in the pre-A, and when we go back in the A phase, we maybe go to the system analysis and, and goes on. So we run that uh, uh, several times with the students, uh, like with, if we were in the real mission. So, and they, they do a preliminary CAD, a physical, uh, mechanical CAD of that thing. And they, they well, they improve in each part of the semester. So that, that's how we do it.